Hi, I'm Adi Olvera with Ballads for Bernie. ¿Cómo están? Soy Adi Olvera de Ballads for Bernie. Estoy aquí con Lucy Riley. I'm here with Lucy Riley, um, also Ballads for Bernie. We both have formed the California Election Integrity uh, Coalition with Voting Rights Task Force. And we're here to talk about how to organize, how to build teams for election integrity in your area. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So we wanted to kind of talk to you guys a little bit about how we came together as Ballots for Bernie. Um, as many of you out there who are Bernie supporters, you are working your tails off, especially here in California in the month of May and June. We were knocking on doors, getting Bernie blisters, <laughs> uh, getting yeah. carpal tunnel syndrome, right? Yeah, oh, Phone yeah. banking. Yeah. Um, and a lot of us came together online um, and had never met each other in person. Um, June 7th changed all of that. Absolutely. Yeah, so um, as the night of June 7th, um, ballots for Bernie began to come together. We actually named um, our Facebook page Ballots for Bernie on June the 8th. Um, within two weeks, we rolled out 58 teams on the ground all over the state of California, thousands of people that were um, committed to being ballot count observers, and um, we put off um, certification yeah. um, for um, the Secretary of State's office for an additional two, almost three weeks, right? Absolutely. Um, because we had so many questions that came up. And we are so proud of our team that we put together. Um, that uh, process... Um, led Addie and I to working closer together with each other. Oh, yeah. Didn't know this woman before. <laughs> we actually met each other for the first time, um, organizing for Ballots for Bernie, showing up at um, our ROV office in Contra Costa County, um, bringing our um, issues um, from our voters before our uh, border supervisors meeting. And um, this process led us to brain, brainstorm right. on how we could help model behavior um, for counties all over the state of California uh, to join us mm -hmm. in cleaning up our elections process. Creamos un movimiento de personas que están preocupadas de sus elecciones. Y realmente nos organizamos en 58 condados y nos y pudimos um, reclutar personas como yo, como Lucy, que están preocupados de sus elecciones y de su voto, del voto de su familia y de su vecindad, de su condado. Quieren saber más sobre el voto. Muchos de ustedes fueron a votar. Su nombre no estaba en la lista para votar y aunque estaban registrados, aunque uh, por años habían ido al mismo lugar a votar, no estaban allí para, para poder votar o les cambiaron el partido. De repente fueron de demócratas y estaban registrados como republicanos o al revés. Y por eso es de que formamos con una coalición um, a nivel estatal para organizarnos y aprender más de cómo proteger nuestro voto. And we had some rather um, heartbreaking stories, didn't we? We did. Yeah. I think one of the most heartbreaking stories that I um, heard um, the night of the election was um, we had a precinct in Richmond um, that was a majority of uh, Spanish-speaking voters mm -hmm. and we got word that there was not one Spanish-speaking poll worker mm -hmm. in the city of Richmond. Yo estuviera muy enojada si llego y no hablo inglés y sé que es mi derecho tener alguien que habla español y no hay nadie que me pueda traducir los papeles y la información que está disponible. So we realized, didn't we, Ed, we had a lot of work to do. We did. We had a lot of work to do in our own backyard in Contra Costa County. I think the saddest part was in Richmond where um, there was information, new information about no party preference. Había nueva información sobre las personas que estaban registradas sin partido eh, particular y um, nothing was translated for them, you know, because it was so last minute. Nobody made an effort statewide to provide this information in Spanish. Esa información Si usted fue registrada como otro partido, nadie le pudo dar la información para que pueda votar por un candidato, de un presidente. And if this happened within the Latino population, mm -hmm. which is quickly growing yeah, to Latinos, overtake the English-speaking population, en, what happened yeah. with our Korean voters? What happened 
with our Cantonese speaking burglars. What happened in the state that's got the largest um, cross section of immigrants from across the planet? Right. What happened? Yeah. So we got a lot of work to do. Yeah. Um, and Addie and I yeah. have committed. <laughs> yeah. Did yeah. this work long term? Yes. Sleepless nights, but it's worth it. <laughs> Lots of sleepless nights. And that brought us to Jim Soper and his allies with the Voting Rights Task Force, who have been working on election integrity issues yeah. for years, who have um, been able to move the ball forward on legislative yeah. issues, to move um, issues forward that we want to see happen within right. the election integrity movement. Yeah, it's no secret yeah. we were... Uh, Bernie supporters, you know, those Bernie supporters are proud. And whether, you know, he's not on a presidential candidate anymore, but we honor his values. And we know that a lot of people who supported him now are now voting for either Hillary or Trump or Jill Stein. And, but they have the values in their hearts of Bernie. And we want to work with you. Queremos trabajar con ustedes que um, le apoyaban a Bernie Sanders y quizás regresaron a otro partido por sus frustraciones con el Partido Democrata o con otros partidos que han visitado antes. Queremos uh, uh, juntarnos, formar una, una relación con ustedes por los, porque nuestra fundación son los valores que Bernie Sanders nos trajo, uh, para, uh, nos unió en esos mismos valores. And so moving forward, um, what we... Um, decided would be the best step next um, in this process of educating ourselves, educating you as our viewers and our fellow um, Bernie supporters, and anyone who else who may be tuning in that um, election integrity issues matter to you. Um, we want to make sure every ballot is counted as cast, no matter who it's for. Right. We join. We, we we invite you to join us on this mission, and it is a mission, and it's not going to happen overnight. This is a lifelong commitment. This is going. This issue is. We're going to be fighting for this issue alongside all of the other issues that matter to us, because we realize right. that we can run progressives until the cows come home, right. mm -hmm. unless we clean up our elections right. integrity. We will not be able to get our candidates voted into office. Right. I mean, look. We can push these issues as hard as we want, but if your elections isn't clean, if your ROV office is not, you know, running a straight sh ship, being truthful and honest with your vote, then what's the point of advocating for um, less discrimination, less racism, you know, take, you know, pri uh, making our private uh, um, um uh, jail systems public again. I mean, or you know, your stance on health care. What's the point of pushing bills and stuff like that through um, our assembly or our state legislation if you can't clean up your elections in California? And so this is why we do it. We need representatives who are going to speak for us, who are going to fight for our issues, and to be able to get them elected, to be able to get more than nine percent of registered Democrats even out to vote, which is what the, the, the abysmally low number of people who came out to vote in the Democratic primary. Yeah. To get people out to vote, they have to be able to trust that their ballot will be counted as cast. Yeah. So thanks so much for listening in to our little history. Yeah. Um, what we're doing next is um, providing you with a conference, an election integrity conference called Take Back the Vote. Mm -hmm. This is going to be happening October 8th and 9th in Richmond, California at Grace Lutheran Church, which is right across from the Civic Center. It's on the corner of McDonald Avenue and 27th Street. Plenty of parking over at the Civic Center. Um, we're going to be all day, folks. Um, registration starts at 930 in the morning, and we're going to be going full steam ahead from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m., no one will be turned away for inability to pay. 
we're asking for a $25 donation for tickets. Mm -hmm. You can donate to this cause by buying tickets, even if you can't come, so that folks that want to be a part of this um, that are unable to pay um, can be a part of this conference. Right. We do have overhead expenses, and we need to get those paid. Right. So any donation, no mm -hmm. matter how small, is appreciated. Right. So let's talk a little bit about the conference and right. what we've got going on Saturday. On Saturday, we are going to talk about how to organize in your county. We're going to talk about how to gain the skills to how to protect your vote in, in your area. Um, you're going to learn if you're, if you're interested in being a poll worker um, or you've been one before if you wanted to observe uh, the ballot count. Um, and if you're an, you've done exit polls or want to learn more about exit polls, even if you just want to be a poll monitor, you just want to visit different polls and see what's going on, if there are people are complaining about what's going on in their precinct, these are skills that a lot of us need to learn so we learn how to protect the vote and not only learn about voter suppression at the polls, but also what are the processes that happen at poll sites that are decided in advance that affect your ability to vote efficiently, get in, get out, get heard, and also um, to begin to just you know decide you you've built your case on why you're going to vote uh, on an issue and on that day of election that's important we want to protect the way that you feel in your vote on on the ballot. You know, and as an ICU nurse, um, Addie, at the bedside, um, we're encouraged to go through a process of A-P-I-E. It's a pie. You know, we're a bunch of women, so we're going to come up with something good yeah. to eat. <laughs> so it's an assessment, right? Yeah, okay. I love pie. And through an assessment, you find a problem. And when you find a problem, you need to come up with an intervention. Right. And to make sure that that intervention has worked, you need to evaluate it, right? So right. we've got an assessment, problem intervention and evaluation and that's what we're going to be asking you as poll workers and poll monitors to help us gather this information because we've got 58 counties that practice 58 county chaos in the yeah. state of California. We've got 58 different processes that work right. um, and different rules and regulations that apply all over the state. So for us to be able to move forward and to fight for a standardization of best practice protocols that are going to work in small, medium, and large counties, we need to know what's going on in your county. Right. We are finding out what's going on in Costa Con right. Costa Costa yeah. uh, <laughs> 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 Sunday, Sunday, folks. Yeah, we're finding out what's going on in our county, and we want to invite you yeah. to bring your problems and issues, and let's talk it out. Let's work it out. Let's let's come up with a strategy for the future. Yeah. So that's what's going to be going on Saturday. Um, let's talk a little bit about what's going on Sunday. On Sunday, we're going to hear from experts that are coming from different parts of the U.S. and some from California to speak on election integrity. We're also going to learn about lobbying in Sacramento for election justice. Um, one of the, our speakers is going to be telling us about um, the governors just signing the vote centers Um that we have to look forward in California. What is a vote center? What's gonna to happen to your precinct? You wanna know you need to come to our conference because that's gonna be crucial. As they lay out the implementation process for vote centers, your voice needs to be heard about how that impacts you from being able to vote from your house to the nearest vote center. What if it's 50 miles from your house? Yeah, I don't know. That's just gonna complicate things. We don't know what that really means, so get involved, come to our conference and come learn about things like that. Um, there's also going to be a panel of experts that are going to tell us about where do we go from here, okay? Maybe um, your candidate is the one on the ballot. Maybe the one that you wanted is not. And what do you want, what can we do to ensure a more fair election if you felt that your vote was suppressed uh, at the primary? We're also going to hear uh, from um, organizations like Election Justice USA, um, and, uh, yeah, Paul see. Taylor Paul from Taylor. Election Justice USA is going to be coming and talking. Paul talk Thomas. To us. Paul Thomas, Thomas, sorry. Yeah. And um, Ray Lutz. Ray Lutz is going to be with us yeah. as well. He's from San Diego. Right. And Bob Fortrecas is going to be our MC. So yeah. we have we have uh, invited and we're going to have some of the um, major players in the election integrity uh, movement yeah. that we're are going to help us educate Right. Um, we're going to educate ourselves. Right. We're going to try to educate you I still to got the history to of the movement. Right? right? I've got a lot to learn too um, on the history of the election integrity movement since 2000, right. um, where we're going forward with this movement. Yeah. 
and we've got some we've got some great options for you too. So we also have Allison with us today. Let's move it over. Hi. Hi. And Allison um, was a um, ballot count observer and helped us um, organize ballot count observers in Alameda County. And um, we another another situation of we talked to each other for how many months, months online before we actually yeah. met each other face to face. So um, we've got some great things planned, as in um, fruit trucks and a uh, little uh, social hour yeah. Saturday afternoon. Tell us a little bit about well, that. Well, we're just going to, um, rather, so we have so many things planned for this conference, we didn't want to be bogged down by serving lunch or having you leave the premises. So we're going to get hook up with uh, the Food Truck Mafia and Off the Grid and a few other people to have them bring the food to us so you can go out and get lunch when you mm -hmm. need it. We're gonna, um, we're gonna, and at the end of the day, we're gonna take, take an hour or two to unwind over an adult beverage if you can. Adult and beverages. Beverage. We're gonna have two for you. <laughs> <laughs> if you're old enough, I know some of some of our attendees might not be of age. Mm -hmm. Um, and we'll just have a chance to unwind and talk about the issues that you know are bothering us that we need to do. You know, I fell into this totally at random, and you know, every. Um, Someone sent me a message on Facebook the day after the election saying, I have I can't take any more days off work. You have to go do this. <laughs> and I was like, What? Huh? Okay, yeah, sure. And in good burner fashion you fell right. And in line. I'm just like, Okay, sure, whatever. You know, my you know, post election hangover, I was like, What, 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 what? So and then here I am. And we're so glad you're here, Allison. <laughs> so, um, and also in good burner fashion, uh, we reached out to um, our network. Of volunteers and we asked for some help with um, shuttling people back and forth from uh -huh. Richmond BART and Allison came through with uh -huh. the great volunteer. Oh yeah, Jeremy Schaefer has offered to donate some time and he's going to be running the shuttle back and forth to BART. Yeah, I know he has other commitments with this election being the campaign manager of for Colin Tiernan, who's running for city council in Fremont. Yay, Colin! Yay. <laughs> and um, so he's, he has a lot of responsibilities for that, but he did offer to shuttle people back and forth from BART so they don't have to worry about driving into Richmond. And sure, and so Jeremy will be picking people up from Richmond BART station on the McDonald's side entrance mm -hmm. or exit um, from 9 a.m. That's good because I didn't mm -hmm. know that. Either. Right, from 9 no, a.m. until 10, side. yeah, and fr from 9 a.m. <laughs> till 10, uh, 10 a.m., um, and that will be both Saturday and Sunday, and we will be able to offer folks a shuttle ride back in the afternoon. We'll have plenty of people there that will be driving, and we can give you a ride back. We'll, we'll, we'll get you there. We'll get you where yeah. you need to go. Right. So we're doing this on a shoestring budget, folks, and anything that you can do to help us out um, by buying a ticket for someone who might not be able to um, uh, come the, uh, uh, pay for the ticket price themselves, um, to be a part of our conference would be much appreciated. Or if you just want to donate to help mm -hmm. us with some of the overhead expenses, we'd very much appreciate that, that as nice. well. Yeah. Okay, so we also have Jim Soper here with us today. And Jim is going to talk a little bit about uh, our um, great speakers that are coming. Um, Jim was able to help us reach out to these folks um, that we've been watching online. Um, and we've been following um, some of what they're doing own projects and it's been um, uh, our, Jim has been a godsend to us to help us connect with these folks all right Jim hi uh, to start off with we will have two world-class security experts computer security experts dr. David Jefferson and dr. Barbara Simons talking about internet voting no, well, it's not a good idea. And Barbara will be talking about election system security and voter registration system security. These are people that go to the major conferences and they know what they're talking about. And we wanted to have you get information, real information, solid information uh, about how these things work. I will be talking at 10, 10 15 about some major changes that A.D. alluded to that are coming up, uh, down the pike in California law. They're going to provide or an opportunity for you to vote 10, 10 days in advance, but at the same time, it's going to uh, cut the number of precincts. Precinct voting will, if a county so chooses, will disappear, and that's going to be up by county. And one of the things we want to do is get 
county organizations going because county by county the decisions will be made as to what they're going to do and how they're going to set this up. And so it's a very local process there. And we'll be talking about that on, on Sunday. And then uh, later on, Derek Cressman's going to talk about campaign finance. He's been doing campaign finance issues for 20 years and is one of the leaders in California about this. And they just had a couple of laws passed or not passed this summer, even uh, in September. And he's going to get us up to date on what's going on with that and what you can do to help get campaign finance straightened out in the state of California. Um, then, of course, Lucy and... And Paul Thomas will come in and, and talk about organizing us as a state and nationally. And we're seeing more things. Finally, we're seeing some things happen in Washington, D.C. Uh, Representative Johnson has proposed two bills that will require ballots across the country, will ban Internet voting across the country, and some other issues. We have not seen action like this in Kennedy will be coming in to, she's been working with Representative Johnson and will come in and talk to us about this. It's going to be a big thing next year. We need to get this passed and uh, it's, it's long overdue. So we're looking forward to having uh, them talk. John Brakey actually has been working out of Arizona and he's come across uh, something that is a little less important in California, but big for the country is um, some ESNS voting systems have been putting in audit modules. So you sort of press a button and have the system audit itself and, and, and record information that you can audit, that you can check. And they are, uh, in Arizona, they're ignoring this module. And so he's starting a fight there to say, we've got to be using this. And he's going to be working on, uh, he's going to be talking about that and alerting much of the country that this type, type of thing exists. This is relatively new, and it's hugely important. Um, that's most, some of, there's going to be other experts. Oh, Ray Lutz will, will come in from San Diego this coming week. I believe it's Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. He's having a three-day trial in the San Diego court over an issue that is very good. They're asking the question, do you have to include vote-by-mail ballots and provisional ballots in an audit? And the registrar said no. And Ray said, no, wait a minute. And now they're taking it to a judge and we're going to see what the judge says about that. That could be a big change for California if we win that. If we don't win it, we're going to have to take it to the legislature and get the law rewritten because it easily, obviously, should be included in any audit. You can't just ignore provisionals <laughs> and um, vote-by-mail ballots. You have to check those, too. So that's most of the people. We're going to have also Lori Grayson press vote at the panel at the end of the day. We're going to have four people there that have been watching the scene and acting in it for a long time. And that's uh, Derek, uh, Derek Cressman, Mimi Kennedy, Barbara Simons, and Lori Grace. And we're just going to ask them the question, where do we go from here? I'm being asked, how, do we, how are we going to mobilize support for legislation? legislative actions. That's going to be the second speech, and the answer to that is it depends on where a bill is. First of all, you want to get a bill introduced, and that's a, it takes a lot more work than it should, and I'll talk about how you can increase your chances to get something introduced, and then it goes through various committees, and then the full even an appropriations committee, and it goes to full, full vote on the floor, and then over to the other house. How you organize what you do depends on where the bill is and who you talk to. You want to get to the decision makers as much as possible. And we'll step through that on, on Sunday. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, locally, again, there are even more opportunities because of SB 450 
for you to give input locally into how your county is going to be organizing its elections. The bill, among other things, requires them to put together a public plan to try to address issues of, do I have to vote 50 miles away? No, the, these voting vote centers should be close to public transportation, according to the law. Is your county going to do that? This is what county organizations need to be paying attention to and giving their input to the county officials so that in each county uh, we can have well-run elections. I'm going to pass the microphone back. All right. Jim, thanks so much. Appreciate it. All right. Again, that's Jim Soper with the Voting Rights Task Force, and we are so pleased to be working with Jim and his organization. And we hope to um, enroll you uh, with organizing with us in the future. We need you on the ground in your county. We're going to be working on Contra Costa County yeah. and Alameda County. And we need you to work on 56 other counties in the state of California. Um, if we are going to clean up our elections process, uh, yeah. we've got to be part of it, right? Right. Yeah. And so what we're doing is educating today. We're going to be educating through our conference. We want to agitate you into action, right? Right. Yeah. We want to organize in California and other other folks that are watching us from other states. Please uh, consider doing the same thing. You know, if you're already doing it, we should connect anyway because we want to learn from state to state what what's happening. That's what when we were at the primary, we started watching what was happening in New York and followed it all the way to California. And we could expect what happened in New York happened to us, and it did. And so here. We are uh, trying to organize uh, and educate folks on um, election issues. So um, let's talk a little bit about how we can model this behavior, this, you know, this the thing that happened. So pretty soon after the election, we organized um, under our fearless leader here. <laughs> <Yeah>. Her. <laughs> nope, you. Okay. <laughs> um, to meet at our um, board, uh, our um, Board of Supervisors meeting, and we met three times. Yeah. Yeah. And we talked to our Board of Supervisors about the issues that we had, um, about complaints that came up. And we are now working with our Board of Supervisors, um, and our actual ROV, Joe right. Pantamia, is coming to our conference. Right. Um, that's how committed he is uh, to working with his voters, with the electorate in our county, um, to move the ball forward and for us to come together and create um, an elections process in Contra yeah. Costa County that we're going to be proud of. Right. There's two things that you should know about ROVs, registrar of voters' offices, mm -hmm. is that some ROVs are elected and some are appointed. And so if you're going to work with the ROV, you should kind of understand that dynamic. I'm still very much learning this. What I do know is that if your ROV is appointed by your Board of Supervisors, you can use your Board of Supervisors, Board of Supervisors in your county to add pressure to your ROV. And not only do they approve the budget, but they can allocate certain funding to things that you want to see get done in your county's ROV. If your ROV is elected, we found that our Board of Supervisors says, well, we can't tell the elected official what to do. We only approve the budget. So that makes it a harder uh, situation to organize, but it's not impossible. They have, um, in every county, or are supposed to have, or maybe should have, um, election advisory boards or commissions, just like the Women's Commission, the Health Commission. And these commissions or advisory boards are meant to guide the ROV with the people's voice and the ROV. And some of these ROVs are not using their election advisory groups, and they should be. Then you should be on it. And this is what we want to do is we're going to start building our relationship with um, Joe Kensami in our county and his deputy and uh, try to learn from, from them and them from us and hopefully get that uh, advisory group or commission going again. So... Uh, this is one of the first steps you should do, not one, well, um, join our group ballots for Bernie, no matter who you're voting for, if election issues are important to you, like our page. Two, find out who your ROV um, um, head is, is he appointed or is she appointed, is he, he or she elected, and find out 
um, who their staff are. Meet them. Go and say, hey, I just want to meet who the staff is. Start finding out when their poll um, worker sign-up deadlines are. That's important. If you want to be a poll worker, you're going to get a small stipend in the state of California to, to volunteer. And, um, and find out when these trainings are happening. So you can join one um, at your county level. And our conference will address some of the issues we saw at poll trainings. Mm -hmm. um, and so we will give you supplemental information as well. Yeah. And so what you're going to learn as a poll worker is one hour's worth of education. There's a lot that can go on um, from 6 a.m. till 9 p.m. as a poll worker. What we're going to talk to you about at our conference is what to look out for, what a irregularities may come up, and we want you to report those back to us. Um, any problem that voters in your precinct have um, with a clean, um, efficient process, we want to know about it. Those are the problems that we need to intervene on and make some right. suggestions to right. our county ROV yeah. offices um, to make uh, the, the, the system of the, the, uh, the uh, process of voting as easy and efficient for our citizens as possible. Right. So um, we're also going to um, be live streaming um, uh, more of our um, uh, Board of Supervisors meetings in the future. We want to encourage you to live stream your Board of Supervisors meeting where you're going and talking to your Board of Supervisors about the elections process mm -hmm. in your county. Yep. Um, we want you to um, follow suit with us right. and have a, um, a your own press conference afterwards where you talk about um, what the problems were that arose, mm -hmm. how you're going to address them. How they responded. Right, how they responded. Yeah. Um, some may let you live stream them. More probably will not. Right. Um, but we have got, we've wrapped our opposable thumbs around the greatest political organizing tool um, since we climbed out out of the trees. Evolutionary right. yeah. wise. I got kicked out of my bed. <laughs> so, social media, using Facebook, using Twitter is the best way we can organize. It's a 24-7 meeting online. And we want you to join us for ballot on um, Ballots for Bernie page. And we also want you, if you live in the state of California, to join us on BallotsForBernie.org. We can plug you in to your ground game that's happening in your county. Remember, we talked earlier in the live stream that we had 58 counties on the ground across the state of California, yes. um, 58 ground, uh, uh, grassroots groups on the ground in, uh, all over the state. We can plug you in with those folks. Yeah. Chances are you've never met them. Being with them uh, cross their paths unless it was through this. So this yeah. is a way to, yeah. you know, organize in your community, and there will be plenty of other issues that you will work with these same folks on. Right. And so let's build um, some relationships here with people who are like-minded who care about elections, and, you know, you, we can only expect the best when we come together. So, quiero <clears throat> agradecer a la comunidad hispana que nos está escuchando y invitarlos que se involucren más en este tema porque es su voto, es mi voto, nuestra voz junta, podemos hacer mucho cambio, ustedes lo saben. Y necesitamos que participen, no nomás en, en las problemas que hay contra el, el voto, sino también lo que hay en los procesos de elección. Son dos cosas diferentes, ¿verdad? El acceso al voto y el acceso al, a la justicia de los procesos de elección. Y las dos cosas son importantes. Y nosotros podemos uh, traer los expertos que nos enseñen sobre estos temas y nos ayude a ser como voluntarios más poderosos con información para que ustedes puedan también um, proteger el voto en su condado. So again, we want to invite you all out to our Election Integrity Conference that's going to be happening in Richmond, California, October the 8th and the 9th um, at Grace Lutheran Church, uh, which is on the corner of McDonald Avenue and 27th. Um, plenty of parking over at the Civic Center parking lot. Um, we'd love for you to join us. Uh, we can pick you up via shuttle at um, Richmond BART Station, and uh, um, the shuttle service will start at 9 a.m., and we'll be shuttling people from 9 until 10 a.m. when the conference starts both days. So we have Jerry with us. Yay, Hello. Jerry. Um, uh, talking about meeting up with people that are your neighbors that you might never 
um, have crossed paths with. Mm -hmm. um, I live in uh, Northeast Richmond, and Jerry is my neighbor in San yes. Pablo. We're, we're probably uh, a t 10 minute walk from each other. Well, fast walk, right? <laughs> yeah, and we would have never probably crossed paths, but working in the Bernie campaign together, and I, we talked to each other for a month online. Yes. I think you showed up one day um, while we were having a honk and wave, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So um, this campaign has been an amazing journey. And we, you've got a great story about thinking that, you know, um, your, your work was done with the campaign. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, well, I was one of the people um, staying up till 3 in the morning for <laughs> a long, long time, like many, many of you, on the Bernie campaign. And I really thought that the day after I get a little bit of rest, I had <laughs> no idea that I was going to be hopping in a car with a bunch of these people I still hadn't met. Right. And going to the precincts and taking pictures, and really it didn't slow down at all the month after the primary or up until certification. And now it's slowed down maybe just a teeny bit, but we're still up and up until 3 in the morning. And um, so it just switched right into the ballots for Bernie, mm -hmm. and now it's switched into election protection. And um, I just wanted to say a few things about um, a couple other things we might cover mm -hmm. at the conference. First, I want to say, though, that um, I'm one of these people who wasn't actively involved in campaigns before this, mm -hmm. and even talking right now is a little terrifying because it's a whole new language to me. Mm -hmm. The language of politics, always been a super progressive, but I don't have this language down. So um, I just I wanted think to say, you're doing a great job. thank you. I just I'm the lay person's per representative here. Um, uh, I've been talking to uh, different organizations that work with supporting non-English speakers at the polls. And we're hoping to have one, of, or we're planning to have one of their representatives there talking to the poll workers in the poll worker training about what they can do. And can I give the website yes, now? Please. And in, if you want to know before then, there's one good website I can refer you to about best practices at the polls for non English speakers. And it's um, <clears throat> Future of California Elections. Oh, I'm sorry, Future of CA Elections.org, orgs, backslash. V E I backslash L A dash V. And we'll put that on the, we'll have that on the board. Too. Yeah, the whiteboard board. But again, future of CA elections.org backslash V E I backslash L A um, dash V. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to say is that they mentioned having the registrar of voters there. We're going to have ROV and also another um, deputy ROV who's really in charge of setting up. Um, precincts where they have eight different languages um, and just they're going to talk about the incredible amount of work that happens bef behind the scenes because if we as voters and progressives want to protect the vote of everybody and we want to work in um, concert with the ROVs it would be good to understand what they're doing ahead of time. Because so, these people have a big job to do. Yes. Mm -hmm. They're on at 11, from 11 to 12, so definitely tune in then. I, I think it's really valuable to understand the huge amount of work that and goes into this. this is 11 this. to 12 at the conference on Saturday. Saturday, Saturday. Saturday. Saturday yes. Saturday. Mm -hmm. um, we also, at the conference, just want to acknowledge that this is the first presidential election since the Voting Rights Act was gutted, mm -hmm. and we have a few things planned for that. Um, we're hoping to, uh, planning to have someone talk to us about what we can do to help reinstate the Voting Rights Act and to bring back the full protection of the Voting Rights Act. Yes. Um, but that's something that we can all be thinking about now and kind of grieving and feeling sad about. And someone's going to be talking to us about that. Um, so that's a few other things. But we're ready on. to get active and we're ready to make headway in the state of California. And we're ready to set the tone for the rest of the country. Election integrity is an issue that needs to move to the top of your list. If you care about these progressive issues, if you were all in for Bernie, it's time to get all in for clean elections. And we want to ask you to join us on the live stream um, for our conference on Saturday the 8th and the 9th. Um, these recordings um, will, be will be available to you on our Ballots for Bernie page. Um, and that is uh, on Facebook, and you can look at any of our past live streams. We've got nine live streams. This is our 10th live stream today. Is it? it is oh. our 10th live stream today. Um, and we would like to uh, invite you to like our Ballots for Bernie page when you like our page and you tune in to our live stream. 
um, our live stream also shows up on your friends pages. We need to get the word out, folks. Um, we can't do this without you. This not only this this issue, this project not only takes a village, it takes an army, and we need your boots on the ground. And one thing I've learned um, since the primary is there's so much more we can do than I thought. Yeah. I there's so many things is I didn't know that we could do. And so I feel like this conference is also about that, and Lucy might be better at explaining this, but we're doing this in, um, in concert with the Voting Rights Task Force, and these guys, I don't know how many people, just a handful of people, six. Six guys. <laughs> you can guys. say more about this. Have done incredible <laughs> things just because they're paying attention. It's just because they're, the, they're a couple of the few people who are paying attention to legislation and, and policy. And they're showing up in Sacramento. And they're talking to our legislators. And we can be yeah. these people yeah. that are paying attention, finding out what we can do. And when I'm on Facebook and I see people saying, oh, the election was rigged, I like to write back and tell them all the different ways that they can volunteer or what they can do. Because it's we're not completely passive unless we choose to be. Okay. And that's one thing that's Jerry's me. dead right. <laughs> you don't have to be anybody special to do this. You can just... All you want, you just have to be interested, yeah. mm -hmm. and you know, and find one of us. We can help you. And if you're <laughs> o over by yourself in some remote area and you're feeling isolated, get on ballots for Bernie. C come find one of us and talk to us, or come to the conference and meet us in person. So we're just not names on your Facebook page. We want you on our team. We want yes, we want as many interested people as possible. You don't have to be super smart. You just have to be ready to do something. You just have to be in. committed. You just yeah. Just have to be it's committed. not hard. It, volunteering, just even if you have one hour, one hour is better than nothing. One hour to learn something you didn't know, and I learned something from these guys and all of these people in this room every single time I talk to them or interact with them. You just have to be there. You know, just show up one time, and you'll be hooked. Ninety-nine percent mm -hmm. of political action mm -hmm. is showing up. Yep. We want you to show up, and it's the people who show up that get noticed. And the people who get noticed have the voice. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so folks, um, we have Addie coming back in. Yeah. So, um, again, um, we really want you to show up for our conference. If you live here in the Bay Area, Sacramento, within a two-hour drive, um, we have plenty of space that we can put folks up if you can't afford a hotel room. We don't want you to not come, to not be a part of this process for inability to pay. We can probably um, say with confidence that we can put up at least 20 people, possibly more. But if you're going to come and you need a place to stay, you need to let us know in advance. So, Addy, do you have anything that you'd like to add? I just want to add a few words in Spanish. Quiero otra vez invitar a la comunidad hispana a hablar español, latinos, que les interesa proteger el voto en su área. Por eso estamos haciendo esta conferencia para poder aprender más. Octubre 8 y 9, este fin de semana que viene, vamos a tener a expertos que nos va a venir a hablar sobre cómo proteger el voto, el voto en California. Este, nuestro patrocinador, TrustVote.org, nos está dando fondos para poder escuchar estos fondos, a estos expertos que nos va a enseñar que, cómo proteger nuestro voto. Ok. Octubre 8 y 9, en Richmond, California. Um, y en la iglesia Grace Lutheran Church que por muchas gracias ellos nos están dando un buen descuento para poder hablar sobre este buen tema si les interesa dar una donación sobre el evento tenemos uh, GoFundMe slash Take Back the Vote o donen un boleto en la página de registración tinyurl.com slash Take Back the Vote Y ahí pueden también registrarse para que vengan. Okay, los estudiantes son gratis. So, por favor, tráiganse a sus hijos para que ellos también les puedan aprender de eso. Si el problema es de que no tienen dónde quedarse, hospedar, por favor, uh, déjenos saber. Y quizás podemos encontrar un voluntario que, que preste un cuarto 
en su casa para que puedan venir a aprender sobre este tema. So, nomás déjenos un comentario en este live stream. Estaremos atentos a los comentarios. Muchas gracias. So again, this is Lucy Riley and Eddie Olvera with Ballots for Bernie. We thank you for tuning in for another live stream here in Berkeley at Next Space. Um, we will have um, the website for trustvote.org, which is helping to support lawsuits um, that are digging deep into election integrity issues across the country. Um, and we will also have a website for um, non-English speaking um, California voters um, so that you can find out more information that will make the voting process um, easy and efficient for you. All right, folks, thanks so much for tuning in. We're going to show you websites, and there you go. All right. So you got that down. You can always pause it if you need to write after the live stream's over, and don't forget to sign up. Students are free for the Take Back the Vote conference. We want you to come learn how to take action and to RSVP. Again, it's tinyurl.com slash takebackthevote. Thanks. Have a good weekend, everyone.